and also uh, the two sides exchanged the views of the strengthening cooperation between the two countries. Uh, it discussed on the joint promotion of construction and interconnectivity of the highway projects between the BCF corridors. And both sides also have agreed to organize experts from these four countries for the field studies as soon as possible. On the principle of the firstly connected and secondly improvement, we, we will gradually improve the interconnectivity of the highway field. 同时呢，在公路通道建设具备一定可行性的前提下，启动四国客货运输协定。目前呢，中缅两国之间已成立联合专家组，并且呢，对瑞丽、马圭、交飘段的公路开展了可行性研究和规划设计。At the same time, under the premise of the certain visibility of the highway construction, we will start to discuss the passenger and freight transportation system of the four countries at present. China and Myanmar have set up a joint group of experts and carried out the feasibility studies and the planning design on Trili uh, Magway and the Piao uh, Piao Highway section. Uh, 下面呢，给各位简单交换一下，目前我们国家和这个欧洲之间的一个呃货物班列的一个基本情况。Uh, please also just uh, uh, leave, leave me some time to this. Just to share some of the current situation of China Europe train cooperation. 目前啊，中国已经正式开行的中欧班列是九条，原来是八条。那么刚好在我们来孟加拉打卡之前的二十五号，开通了新的一条，所以到目前为止是开通了九条。The main fact is that China has officially put eight trains into the operation. Of course now. We shall see nine trains because of one the new train was opened just before uh, we, uh, our coming to Bangladesh. Uh, they are from Yixing Ou, that is Chongqing to the Dago to Yixibao. The second is Rong Ou, that is from Chengdu to Guolan to Luozi. Zheng Ou, that is from Zhengzhou to the Dago Hanbao. Suzhou to the Guolan Huasha. Wuhan to the Jiek and Guolan. 呃，长沙到德国杜里斯堡，义乌到西班牙马德里，西安到荷兰的这个鹿特丹，以及二十五号刚刚开通的广东东莞到俄罗斯的莫斯科。As a matter of fact, that the nine trains to be operated, I shall just introduce one by one. The first is the Chongqing of Sichuan province to the Duisburg of Germany and Chengdu to Rhodes. Poland, Zhengzhou, uh, Hamburg, uh, to uh, Suzhou, uh, to, uh, to the Germany, and also the Suzhou to Russia of Poland, Wuhan, that Poland, and also we have also the Changsha to the Poland, as well as the uh, Pakistan, and also we have the Yiwu, Xinjiang, Europe uh, route, and also Xi'an, Xinjiang, Europe, and also we have the Xi'an, Rotterdam, Netherlands. 我在这个地方呢，重点给各位介绍一下，呃，从重庆发往德国杜里斯堡的这条国际大通道，它是二零一一年三月开通的。And as a matter of fact, let me just prioritize introducing about the train between the Chongqing to Europe, and this was opened in March of 2011. 那么这条铁路呢，最初。它这个是通过呃几个国家，六个国家，那么铁路部门呃共同协商，那么来解决的一个就是线路问题、站点的这个停靠问题、车次的这个这个这个问题、时间运行问题、价格问题。And as a matter of fact, this Chongqing Xinjiang Europe train is actually we call it the five scheduled train because we have to consider. Uh, there are scheduled uh, routes, scheduled uh, stations, scheduled train number and time, and also the price. Uh, 首先啊，就是中国海关和哈萨克斯坦、俄罗斯、白俄罗斯、波兰和德国五国海关呢达成了便捷通关协议。Firstly, the China Customs has reached a facilitation agreement on the customs clearance with uh, Kazakhstan, Russia, uh, Belarus. Poland and Germany. 
达成这个通关协议之后呢，从在重庆海关检审过的货物呢，那么一路到欧洲，我国海关都便捷放行，反之亦然。那么这个就叫做什么呢？叫做关检赴任，执法赴驻，信息共享。The goods vetted by the Chongqing Customs will get a quick customs clearance from over uh, five countries and the vice versa. This is a mutual recognition of customs and the mutual help on law enforcement and information sharing platform. 第二呢，就是各国，呃，中国和五个国家铁道部门呢，呃，形成呃共同商定，形成了这个五定班列，就是刚才我说的定线路、定站点、定车次、定时间。The second is that the international five scheduled train has been formed under the support of the railway departments in various countries. And the five scheduled, like I mentioned, I repeat it again, and that is the scheduled route, scheduled stations, scheduled train numbers, scheduled time, and scheduled um, price. 呃，现在宜兴欧啊，它的级别是最高级，就是说它只要从重庆始发，开往德国杜里斯堡，那么它所经过的。国家所有的特快、普快、快车都要货车都要给这一趟专列让行，它每小时是一百二十公里。呃、uh, ，After the signing of the agreement, Chongqing, Xinjiang, and Europe train has the highest priority, which means all other trains, express train, local train, fast train, and other goods train, cargo trains must give way to it. Uh, and the uh, the rapid speed. Of this train is uh, uh, up to 120 km per hour. 另外一个呢，这条这个线路啊，它这个目前呢，通过中国和五个国家协商呢，解决了一个硬价的问题。最初，呃，一个集装箱每公里是各个国家都不一样这个价钱。那么最初呢，是从呃七美元啊零点七美元呢。降到了二零一四年的零点六美元，那么运费到了二零一五年呢，降到了零点五美元，那么这个运价就和海运呃基本相当。As a matter of fact about the price, there after the called ordination of the five countries railway departments, and originally it actually costed about 0.7 US dollars per kilometer in 2013, and actually after the negotiation it was declined to 0.6 in 2014, and even by the year 2015, the freight has actually just dropped to about 0.55, so it's approximately just uh, quite similar to the maritime transportation. Uh, and also, uh, the uh, new uh, railway train uh, just uh, started from Yunnan to uh, Europe, also just uh, newly started. 这条线路是今年的七月一号开通的。这个班列呢是昆明出发，通过这个满洲里口岸到达荷兰的荷兰的这个鹿特丹。它主要的运载的货物就是咖啡豆和咖啡。As a matter of fact, that uh, uh, for this Yunnan Xinjiang Europe train, the major trans the cargo transported. Are just focused on the uh, coffee beans and the coffee powders, and it was open on July 1st of 2015. It started from Kunming Wanjiaying Railway Container Central Station, then went through the uh, Manchuria port, and finally reached the Rotterdam of the Netherlands. And next, I'd like to propose such following. <coughs> Suggestions. First of all, let's just uh, we should set up uh, actually a, a regular meetings between the official and, and summits of the four countries uh, government government officials. 加强高层的这个沟通协调，建议啊，呃，借助中国南亚博览会这个重要平台，建立，呃，每年召开一届的这个中国南亚博览会的这个借助这样一个机遇呢，来呃召开孟中印缅四国政府的领导人的这个会议
，那么来讨论决定，呃，梦中一年的金色环节当中的一些重要的问题、重大的决策。The BCA economic uh, uh, corridor actually needs to strengthen a, a high, high level communication and coordination. And so we should set up a mechanism for regular meetings between these, the uh, head of the four countries' governments through the important platform of, the, of this uh, expo. And also, we need to hold summit conference to discuss and decide on important policies on the construction of the economic corridor and major projects, which will greatly promote the construction of the economic corridor. 第二个是建立梦中一免经济走廊这个秘书处。呃 ，secondly, I suggest to establish a secretariat of the economic corridor. 建立这个秘书处的这个主要职责啊，它主要是负责开展梦中一免经济走廊的一些日常事务。那么，通过秘书处联合研究来制定。互联互通的一些公路、铁路的中长期规划，并且呢，把这个规划呢提交四国政府，来推动梦中印缅四国来签署 BCM 的跨境客货运输便利化协定，那么来促进贸易、投资、客货流动、人员流动的这个便利化。To just deal with the daily affairs of the establishment of the economic corridor through the joint research, the secretariat will make the mid and long term plan on the interconnectivity of the highway and railway of the four countries, promote the signing of the BCIM cross border passenger and freight transportation facilitation agreement, promote trade investment and cross border passenger flow, and facilitate the personnel exchanges. The third one is. 建议啊，呃，建立四方四国、省邦和城市之间的合作机制。And thirdly, we should also establish a cooperative mechanism between the states and also the cities in these four countries. 呃，建议呢，就是云南省呢和孟印缅三国地方政府之间这种友好关系呢，取得一些呃突破性的进展。那么尽快这些，比如说举办四国城市的论坛，搭建昆明、万德勒、达卡、加尔各答四个主要经济中心城市的对话合作机制。No, we uh we need to establish a friendly relationship between Yunnan and the local government of Bangladesh, India, and Myanmar, and also strive to achieve a breakthrough in cooperation between the provinces of the countries as soon well as possible. We also need to host. Have a, uh, the uh, four cities, forums, uh, based on their economic corridors, and build a dialogue and also cooperation mechanism in the four major economic central cities, Kunming, Mandalay, Dhaka, and Kerala, in order to just play a guiding role in the industrial cooperation. Fourthly, is about the joint funding for these multiple channels. Uh, we should strengthen the joint funding for these multiple channels. We should strengthen the joint funding for these multiple channels. 重大的一个发展机遇啊！争取一个就争取丝路基金，为梦中一年经济走廊的一些早期、早期的收获项目提供启动资金和融融资的这个支持。呃，同时呢，我们建议啊，参照东盟以及大白宫和自区域在互联互通当中的一些做法，那么通过设立梦中印缅互联互通合作基金为先导，同时呢，有效利用亚韩、世韩等国际发展机构的资金和技术，来推动梦中印缅互联互通的基础设施重大项目的一些落地。And as a matter of fact, that at the same time, he may also refer to the practices of the ASEAN and GMS sub-regional cooperation. And, and we should also promote the cooperation on infrastructure and major projects through the establishment of the BCM Interconnectivity Cooperation Fund, and also technology funded also provided by the ADB and the World Bank and other international development agencies. We also need to actively promote the 
preparing the work for the construction of the AIIB, the Asian Infrastructure uh, Investment Bank, so that we can push forward the financial support of developing countries, including the ASEAN countries, on the infrastructure construction. 第五呢是积极推进云南和孟加拉国建立商海联盟式的旅游合作。Uh, fifthly is we need to actively promote the type of the mountain and sea alliance tourism cooperation between Yunnan and Bangladesh in tourism. 加强云南旅游在孟加拉国的宣传推介，以及孟加拉国在云南的旅游推介。把云南的优质山地旅游资源和孟加拉国优质的海滨资源结合起来，打造跨境的商海旅游精品线路。Uh, we need to strengthen the promotion of the Indian tourism in Bangladesh. Also try to combine the quality mountain tourism resources in Yunnan with the uh, quality coastal resources in Bangladesh, and actively create cross-border mountain and sea tourist lines. 比如，我们通过建立，呃，云南孟加拉商海联盟的旅游集散中心，提供优优质的旅游中介服务，来推动两个国家旅游的出入境便利化，来不断的扩大中国内地以孟加拉国的旅游市场规模。And we also、uh, can just work jointly to build the Yunnan-Bangladesh Mountain and Sea Alliance Distribution Tourist Center. And provide high quality travel agency services, promote tourism facilitation for exit and entry, and continue to expand the scale of tourism market in the mainland China and Bangladesh, and encourage tourism enterprises in mainland China to invest and develop tourism projects in Case Plaza and other areas in Bangladesh. And most of these tourism uh, resources sharing and also new projects opened, uh, like I mentioned, that in uh, uh, Camp Spada and also in uh, other parts of the beautiful scenic spots uh, in Bangladesh. 最后就是建议啊，我们要多加强沟通，增信识宜。And the next is to strengthen the communication, enhance the mutual trust, and also we need to just have better understanding of each other. We hope that China and Yunnan and the Mongolia two countries have more communication between them. So, we hope to have more communication and more communication. And we hope that the think tanks need to strengthen our Discussion the strategic policy basis for both of our governments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Feng. Uh, before opening uh, uh, the uh, floor, I just uh, want to summarize very briefly what our presenters have uh, delivered. In the first presentation by Mr. Shoyul Islam, uh, he talked about basically uh, the issues like trade, investment, finance, and also connectivity. And in terms of these uh, issues, when he talked about trade, he uh, basically made the emphasis on direct connectivity. And in his presentation several times, he talked about the alternative routes. Uh, trade imbalance issue also came and since China has become the largest uh, trading partner in Bangladesh and uh, it's a very good news for Bangladesh that uh, it's now been changed from India to China and I can still remember even I'm not an economist that uh, when uh, India was the largest trading partners there was so many hue and cries within the economists and other uh, academicians because of this uh, 
not so friendly relation between uh, our neighbor. But when China became the biggest trading partners, we are not seeing that kind of hue and cry, and people are happy in a way. But still, there are concerns that uh, this imbalance is uh, towards the Chinese size more, and we have very less export there. So this is one issue, but I just want to add one point from my side that because once I was uh, having a discussion with uh, ex-Chinese ambassador, not this current one, when he was visiting our university. And I asked him this direct question that what is the solution of this trading balance between Bangladesh and China? Then he gave a very uh, interesting example of Chinese trade history that uh, once Japan and China had a very big trading balance. And then uh, what China did, they started uh, manufacturing, they started manufacturing plants of Japanese companies in Chinese mainland. And that's the way that then the, it turned in a different way. So now probably that's one solution for it. We'll not be able to export our products in Chinese markets. I am not an economist again, but that's my view. But probably we can produce Chinese products in Bangladesh land, and we can have more Chinese manufacturing uh, industries here since the China's uh, uh, living standards is going up and the labor cost is going up. So the Chinese companies will be feeling more happy to come to Bangladesh and having their plants here and then exporting the same products from Bangladesh to China. And that's the way probably it will be more balanced. But that's again a simple, uh, very nice suggestion from my side. And then uh, in the game, uh, in terms of this trade, uh, uh, Mr. Along Islam also talked about regional blocks and some of the newly emerged new regional blocks probably is coming as a challenge for Bangladesh because Bangladesh was not part of the regional blocks, that's concern he raised. In case of investment, he talked about mostly the invest infrastructure investment which is very important for Bangladesh and also the issue of this deep support which was probably not, especially this Sonadia was not being done because of the geopolitical problems but still he thinks that the Shunadia is the best possible option. The other seaports are the second best. And the third uh, point that he brought there was the finance, and uh, he correctly mentioned that finance was not uh, in the discussion before in any of the China-Bangladesh dialogue. But now it is becoming so important since RMB is coming as an alternative uh, uh, currency for trade exchange. And probably Bangladesh can also think about currency swap agreement with China in future. And the last point he tried to maintain and talked about was connectivity and this PCM corridor uh, issue he brought in and he said that this is has this having some challenges that PCM corridor. And again, if I uh, put some of my own observation that this is probably one of the uh, oldest discussion about corridor in this region, and but it goes slowly and that probably created some frustration, especially the small uh, South Asian countries like Bangladesh. Nepal and uh, other countries, neighboring countries. And the major issue probably is uh, because of, the, again, the role of India. And because India probably is not very confident yet that how far uh, they will be getting benefit of, out of PCIM. And that's why it is probably a little bit slow comparing with the other corridors that China is making with Southeast Asian countries that the examples came in the second presentation. And uh, that's why uh, Mr. Islam again uh, proposed that alternative route, probably directly from uh, Kunming to through Myanmar to Bangladesh. So whether this is possible or not, that's not I'm not quite sure. And uh, I think it's not only India, but also the Bangladesh relation with Myanmar is also a big issue. Uh, uh, if we cannot improve the relation with Myanmar, probably uh, because Bangladesh Myanmar does not have a still very uh, trust with the relationship. And we also have to keep it in mind that China alone probably, again this is my own suggestion, China alone probably cannot uh, influence Myanmar to give this access. Uh, because India also have a uh, now broader investment in Myanmar. And India also uh, uh, have a lots of influence in Myanmar uh, policy decisions. So from that point of view and also probably we need uh, some real research and studies about these uh, uh, routes towards Myanmar through Bangladesh. Because once I met in Myanmar the ex-Bangladesh ambassador, Major General Anup Chakma, and he was saying to me that uh, the, the terrain in, in uh, uh, Myanmar side, and especially this, um, uh, this the people, uh, the place where the Rohingyas are living is very difficult terrain. So building roads there 
uh, and coming into the Bangladesh border probably needs some more research and studies. So that's the uh, uh, sum up of the presentation by Mr. Shoji Islam. And then we had this uh, second presentation by Mr. Frank, and uh, he basically started his discussion uh, with this uh, new Silk Route uh, concept and also the importance of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, which is uh, newly been there and it has lots of potentialities to invest in the infrastructure. And then he uh, talked about uh, this issue of uh, uh, BCIM and he rightly mentioned that BCIM, even though this was an old concept, but gradually it is becoming popularity and also validity and uh, kind of a support from all the countries. And then uh, he gave us an, a brief idea about the China's uh, railway technology and also this uh, its uh, uh, the railway network's uh, connectivity with uh, South Asian and Southeast Asian countries. And uh, he rightly said that probably we had some frustration about BCIM, but BCIM is, is a very visible and a very possible kind of a thing. Corridor is very possible kind of a thing and it is uh, right at the corner. And uh, probably as we said that uh, the South Asian nations, we are a little bit impatient and uh, restless. We want uh, quick results from everything. But China is a country which, is, which goes always for a long-term kind of a thing. So waiting 20 years for a good result is nothing for probably Chinese people. But in South Asia, we become very restless if it is uh, 10 years and still nothing happened. So probably uh, we need to keep some patience here in terms of this uh, corridor to see in place. And then he gave us about uh, his observation about Asian highway net network and trans transition railway network. And uh, it is rightly been said that uh, the successes of China with other uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries and also the success in railway networking with European countries, it is a proof that some of the problems uh, between the countries needs to be solved bilaterally. So it is not pos possible for China to come and interfere in that stages. But as he said that this BCM uh, corridor network is still has some probably disadvantage from the Indian side uh, point of view because they are not quite sure how they will be getting benefit. So we have to have more discussion with the Indian side. And for uh, Myanmar side also, Bangladesh needs to really have a serious constructive discussion regarding the issue. Because without having a clear understanding about this issue, probably this political issue will make more hindrance in this economic kind of thing. And then he gave us a uh, detailed uh, outline about this midline, north line, and southern line of these uh, different corridors. And uh, according to as far as I do understand that uh, the northern line is more historical kind of a thing. It was been there, uh, and then also probably his. Uh, 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 study the southern line probably would be more feasible. And then uh, uh, Mr. Feng also talked us about, give us an idea about the railway uh, on road connectivity with uh, other Southeast Asian countries and it's, uh, it is giving a clear impression that it is progressing very well with Myanmar, both railway and uh, road connectivity from Kunming to Myanmar and other Southeast Asian countries. And uh, China is promoting GMS agreement with the neighboring countries. Some cases it has been very successful. And then uh, the la later stage of his presentation, he gave us this uh, broad picture, and which is quite uh, amazing and revolutionary to see how this train route from China to Europe has already been established. And uh, it is quite amazing. It's uh, very successful, it looks like. And that shows that it is possible. If China and Europe so far, they can be connected through railway, so why not Kunming and uh, Mandalay and Dhaka and Calcutta? So that's the basically the future trade communication that we can see that is coming. So at the last stage of his uh, presentation, he gave some suggestions to make it happen, the BCIM corridor. And the suggestions I have two parts. One is the cooperation mechanisms he talked about through maybe more official meetings at different levels from the state uh, 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 leaders level to up to the local government level. And also set up secretariat and he also talked about mutual funding. But also he uh, gave more emphasis in terms of communication and trust building. 
and to have a more a better communication, tourism can be a, a very good avenue. And we are seeing these things. I recently was in Sri Lanka, and these Chinese tourists are there everywhere. In Sri Lanka, there are thousands of thousands of thousands of Chinese tourists are coming. In India, they are coming, and Nepal, they are coming. So we hope that Bangladesh also will uh, create an atmosphere uh, with the partnership with the Yunnan government, so that we can have more Chinese tourists. And also, trust building is a very important thing, not only between uh, Bangladesh and China, because it's already that trust is there. Bangladesh really trusts China as a very uh, good friend. Uh, but also, we need to build uh, trust between Bangladesh and Myanmar and Bangladesh and India. So, I think that's the uh, major uh, understanding that he tried to put in. And also, the final, he said there's some joint studies for future institutions. So that's the uh, summarization of the presentation. Now I'm opening the floor if the participants have any questions or questions. Thank you, Chair. I have uh, two short questions. Uh, one to Mr. Hao and one to Shane. Uh, the first question to Mr. Hao, uh, would you slightly elaborate your wonderful concept of mountain to sea tourism corridor. And my question to Shahid is that this concept of a currency swap that you said, what would be the reaction from the dollar controlled economy of the West? How would they react to this kind of an alternative currency for trading? Thank you. Shanghai联盟旅游 那么孟加拉的这个海滨资源呢非常丰富提出来的一个这样一个设想。As a matter of fact, that the um, One China Sea, which is the alliance cooperation, is based on our study, based on the advantage for both countries in tourism. Because uh, you know that Yunnan, 94% uh, of our topography and geography is based on the highland. And actually, we don't have the sea and ocean. So uh, it's very attractive for the local people to just go abroad or go to the seashore to just experience the seashore tourism. And uh, vice versa for you. And also that I, we think that your people would like to see some mountainous sailing sports. So that's why we just provide these uh, suggestions. We can just set up a kind of, uh, we call it mountain and sea alliance agreement. And then based on this, we can expand our people-to-people -people communication. Because you know, as uh, uh, what Mr. Um, uh, Hack has mentioned just now, the chairman mentioned that uh, for the interconnectivity, culture will go first, especially tourism. So maybe we, we like to just get a starting point by a breakthrough, as a breakthrough for the communication between these two countries. Okay. 每年都有大量的这个这个游客到世界各地 and, uh, let me just uh, add something that uh, uh, nowadays you can see that China becomes actually have the most visitors abroad and to the other uh, part of the world. Especially that uh, uh, for the Yunnan people, we prefer to go somewhere. 
with the Z, like I, like we mentioned, because we never we said see that. And uh, however, uh, if we can just utilize the resources. Uh, at hand from our country and your country, from our province and your province, so that we can just really enhance kind of alliance. And we can maybe give some preference for your people when they come to Vietnam or to China, and you give us some preference policy for our people to go abroad to your country and your province. That's it. Regarding current issue of that point uh, of mediation from other blocks, particularly the dollar block, you said uh, yes, emerging countries are uh, growing very rapidly for the past few decades. Uh, we have also seen that they are, um, we are entering into an era that uh, one might well uh, you know, go towards an uh, era of what economies call multiple reserve currency. So dollar has been and remained the dominant uh, block, but at the same time you would see that uh, Euro uh, also they are facing some internal uh, crisis now, but still uh, if it's a dominant currency, then Chinese currency, problem with Chinese currencies, you see the thing is finding China's financial system remains underdeveloped, they have not uh, liberalized capital account. So this is a problem for uh, China internally because if they uh, you know, liberalize capital account, then uh, there will be a lot, I mean, the rest of the world will be more confident about the currency. But for the China, the fear is that might also encourage the capital flight from the country. So what, what China is currently doing is that, as um, despite the currency is not fully convertible in terms of capital account, what they are doing is, as China is the last, I mean, largest country in terms of uh, export and import, the largest trading country in the world. So it is convincing some of the neighboring countries and including Russia to use more and more renminbi uh, to conduct some of their trade. For example, now a uh, large part of China-Russia trade is uh, settled through renminbi. And as Russia has problem with uh, America and other dollar block countries, it is. Ra now, Russia's interest to actually to uh, you know settle trade and other transition in 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 R and and also they are facing some you know embargo from European Union and all these countries. So the basic objective of currency swap agreement is is that is that for example a country uh, like uh, Pakistan or Bangladesh, if the the traders want to uh, uh, you know open LC, they need to uh, have. Uh, uh, you know, enough liquidity in, 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 within its systems and central bank and other banks. So what Chinese um, central bank is doing is uh, to create RMB liquidity beyond Chinese border, they are signing currency swap agreements they have. Initially, actually, if you look at uh, this graph, initially they had uh, about five to six. Now you can see that all of it, Asia and Africa, they are signing the agreements. And and, and as I showed in my presentation, that uh, the international institutions uh, are now projecting that by 2020, 20% 20 of Chinese trade would be settled in RMB. <coughs> so initially there has been some resistance, still there are some resistance, but as Chinese cloud are increasing, particularly as it is the largest uh, trading country in the world, <coughs> so many countries uh, for their own interests now, uh, you know, uh, creating RMB liquidity. And also now you can see that there are some geopolitical issues as well, particularly with Russia and, and the Western countries. So all in all, uh, what I want to say is that there are some resistance, but at the same time economic forces uh, with regard to China is so dominant that countries, I mean, the trading partners are now uh, convinced that uh, that uh, dollar will not be the only dominant block. There will be uh, probably the, we are entering into the era of multiple reserve currency. And it is in this perspective that IMF has to, uh, you know, uh, accept uh, the Chinese currency, which is uh, one of the SDA currencies that has been included in November 2016. So uh, there has been resistance, but at the same time, I would say that uh, these are the, some of the economic forces you can place is that long. Uh, 
I'm Tanvira Tavassum from Department of International Relations, University of Dhaka. I have two questions to both of our speakers, uh, Mr. Hao Peng and Shahidul Islam, sir. Mm, that uh, we understand that uh, countries within the South Asian region and outside the region have their apprehensions about the One Belt One Road. How do you think these migrations um, misgivings uh, can be addressed? And the, another one is. Um, how China will establish securities for these new routes of uh, which we are calling Silk Route or Maritime Routes, since many of them are through potentially dangerous areas such as Africa's coast, uh, maritime piracy, and a wild west kind of Central Asia and Islamic extremist. Thank you.那么应该说它无论是对南亚和东南亚那么都是不是一样的呃因为呃对南亚和东南亚呢更多的可能可以涉及到这个呃海上丝绸之路那么对于这个因为呃两条路向的这个这个走向不一样呃丝绸之路经
And uh, as we mentioned that uh, uh, the policy are the equal to all countries on this silk road. So that's why uh, when we just provide the fund or financing, uh, actually that is based on how you need it in urgency and uh, uh, what will be the amount of the policy, uh, of the investment. And our government will have actually a, a group who can just uh, uh, try to assess this project first and then they prioritize those projects in most urg urgent need and so that we can help them. Yeah, I'm partially satisfied yeah, with can this I, answer. Can I, can I answer? I mean, regarding uh, your question about the apprehension on, on one base one route, if you, if you look at uh, the overall picture of Asia, you will see that this is the most dynamic economic reason, but at the same time, uh, there's a competition to influence the region. America has that so-called Asia pivot. Now China has uh, one belt, one route. India, not very firm, but they also have some ambition. So as a result, this Chinese one belt, one route, of course, uh, is not seen very favorably by some of the uh, countries, particularly India, if I can mention. But uh, how to uh, address this issue? Probably you can learn from uh, Chinese relationship with Southeast Asia, particularly ASEAN. You would notice that for economic uh, development, they are highly dependent on China. On the other hand, on security issues, they rely on American law. So they have somehow has been able to you know, separate these two issues through ASEAN Regional Economic Forum in Southeast Asia, in North Asia. North East Asia is the six-party talk. Uh, and so probably, uh, I mean, um, what uh, he said in addition to this, uh, your, very, your question is very valid. Uh, if I can give you a micro example, that China has established a maritime silk route fund for East Asian, Southeast Asian countries. But they are not taking up money from the, that project. Uh, so uh, there are some real apprehensions, but as I said, that it would be here because this is the most contested reason in terms of uh, geopolitical, uh, you know, uh, what you call, uh, to increase their geopolitical uh, cloud or influence. But uh, Chinese plan, uh, some even American economists uh, see what he said that is uh, win can be win -win, but we need we still need to work on how to develop win -win mechanism for all the countries. I mean, the, the testing case would be the AIIB, the, though they said that it would be equal opportunity for all the countries. So if China behaves that way, probably much of the prevention would be removed. So you have to wait. I, I was part of the initial concept conference on the Belter Road or the New Maritime Silk Road, and I've been part of the, all the subsequent conferences in China. One of the hopes of the, of the new route is that if you take more trade, economic activity, and development to those troubled areas, then much of this militancy and the terrorism and the piracy will come down. And then the internal mechanisms of those states like Somalia and others can put a halt to the rising militancy and piracy in those areas. But this is the project in the making, so we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you very much uh, to the uh, both uh, uh, discussant, the presenters, and also the participants. So we are already running short of time, so I'm closing this session now. We have a uh, tea break. Thank you all. We'll take a break for 20 minutes for a cup of tea or coffee, then come back here again. The tea is served there. Thank you.